Have you been holding that wire to the coast open? Yes, sir. San Francisco's ready. Go ahead. Hello, Frisco. Hammond talking. Yes, Mr. Hammond. This is Paul. Were you able to pick up Professor Howland's test? Yes, sir. He's stepping with Marlon. The image was much clearer than we've ever been able to tell about it. He came through on the micro short wave and was using about 289. All right, thanks. Goodbye. This should convince you we've got to fight to maintain our position with any weapons we can utilize. We're caught out on a limb, but we're going to fight for what we've got, and more. What are the chances of our engineers hitting up on the same idea? Remember, he hasn't even protected himself with patents. We knew that when we offered him $5 million for the rights to his discovery. This latest invention of the Hollands is what we've all been afraid of. We're coming out on top, but we may have to prescribe a drastic cure for... Did you send for me? Yeah. Come right in, Grace. Gentlemen, good afternoon. How do you do? Cigar? Thanks. You realize it's possible for a man of experience with brains and ambition to go far in this business? Well, I've got the ambition. We've got to be ready for any eventuality. One jump ahead of the other. We picked you for a definite job. It's worth almost anything to this company that you make it worth. You can be valuable. A supremely valuable man. And valuable men receive their just rewards on Earth. Not in... Certainly. From now on, you become a sort of employee at large. Understand? Yes, perfectly. You're interested in getting... The less we know of the details of what you're doing, the better. We want results. Two old-fashioned cocktail, darling, please. And one dry martini for Dr. Schofield. And be sure it's very, very dry. Hello, Schofield. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry I missed you yesterday. Uh, we docked last Saturday, but I had to run on to Washington for a few days. Are you going to be here long this time? I'm sailing again on the 20th. Another criminal case? No. There's a conference of brain specialists being held in Berlin, and they've invited me to address them. It's weird the way you can diagnose a living brain. All the credit should go to men like Jim, who devote their time and money to develop the devices we use. We may invent things, but when you fellows get hold of them, you use them for an entirely different purpose. It's no sense you're trying to hide your light under a barrel. All Europe's wondering what this latest development of yours is going to do to television. That reminds me, dear. Here's a wire I just received. They picked up the test in Vancouver perfectly. Oh, that's wonderful. Wonderful. Congratulations. This sounds like a meeting of the Mutual Admiration Society. It can't be that you two giants of the scientific world are embarrassed at the sight of a little girl like me. <laughs> you be sensible, Jim. <laughs> you think I'm sensible even if Mother doesn't, don't you, Doctor? I think you're... Now, be careful. Your professional reputation's at stake. Very charming. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but Howland must realize that when he begins televising a regular schedule, he's liable to run into difficulty. In what way, sir? He may not be so fortunate in securing men like yourself when he increases his operating staff. I don't think there will be any difficulty. You'll admit there is always the possibility of an employee becoming disgruntled over some fancied injustice. Dissatisfaction always leads to temptation. There's always purchasers for valuable secrets. I see what you mean. However, I doubt you'll be able to convince Professor Howland. Think it over. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Barry. Hello. Oh, hello. Package. Really? It's High Magazine. Oh, here you are. Yes, 
Have him come right in. Well, well, this is indeed an unexpected pleasure. No. Been doing a little thinking? Uh, yeah. You weren't able to convince Howland. No, uh, but I thought maybe we could uh, talk things over. Yeah. And come to an understanding? Perhaps. Would a hundred thousand dollars be any inducement? of television which I'm going to show you tonight is so big that I'm really frightened every time I think of it. Why? Right. Too many people realize it's tremendous importance. You've had office for it, I suppose. Naturally. Every company of any size in this country and abroad has been trying to secure the right to use it as I do. And further, to purchase it outright. Oh, I, I can recommend this brandy. I think I will. What? Over an island far over the sea, there is a cunning good place. I'm sorry, I couldn't get away. Oh, I beg your pardon. Disappointed? Not exactly, but you see, I promised to meet Dick here right after dinner. And instead, you ran straight into my arms. I did not. Certainly you did. I certainly did not. If I hadn't been here to catch you, what would have happened? I'll show you. I would have been strolling sedately along, admiring the beautiful view and the wonderful moon. Uh, it is uh, nice out here tonight, isn't it? Lovely. Over in Ireland, far over the sea, there is a tiny Here I am, Dick, over here. Oh. I came out for a breath of air, and uh, do you know... Now, most... don't go telling tales out of school. Uh, well, she did seem a little jumpy when she saw me. Are you nervous here? Not exactly. But I have kind of a funny feeling here. My heart doesn't want to stay where it's long. It keeps going flippity-flop. <laughs> I guess the excitement was too much for you. Well, we still have time for a short walk. Harry, will you join us? I'd like to. But there are still a few things I have to do before we go on the air. Some other time, perhaps. Very, very interesting, isn't it? Sorry, Missy. Thumbs all fingers. Oh, it doesn't matter, darling. It's all right. When wine is filled with accident, steps of disaster hasten. Stop that nonsense. Pick up that glass before someone is really injured. No matter what happens, Arling always has a proverb. But I'm not a bit superstitious, but it does give one a rather freaky feeling. Oh, don't pay any attention to Arling. He has a mania for quoting Confucius and Charlie Chan. <laughs> you know Charlie. <laughs> Clever, these Chinese. Good evening. Good evening. 
Why, Mr. Grayson, I didn't recognize you. How are you, sir? Grayson, how are you? Fine, sir, fine. Can't you see, June, the chance we've both been waiting for? Does your promotion depend entirely upon father? Well, if your father would only... I think I'll have to go in. All right. I'll do it myself. Even you, as the chief of police, will have to admit that your methods are obsolete. That may be, Jim. But we seem to get along pretty well as it is with our radio teletype system. Suppose you had instant pictures at your command showing every move a criminal you are tracing makes. If you can do that, I can't understand why the government isn't interested. Government officials will be watching tonight, not only in Washington, but in widely separated points throughout the country. I'll admit it should be of great interest to them. After the broadcast, I have a greater surprise. A further development which you will hardly believe until you see it. You make me very curious. It is my hope to be able to prove that television is the greatest step forward we have yet made in the preservation of humanity. It will make of this earth a paradise we've always visioned, but have never seen. Well, some are part of that. Man named Mendoza say he must see. Him no take no for answer. Mendoza? Our gentleman is in the reception room. Thanks, Arlene. You'll pardon me, won't you? Certainly. Perry, there's a gentleman here named Mendoza. Do you happen to recall him? No, sir. Should I see him for you? That's not necessary. I'll talk to him for a few moments. It's nearly eight. I'll flash you from the laboratory when I'm ready. Mr. Howland? Yes? I am sorry to interrupt at a time like this. I represent a group of men that are very anxious to purchase your invention. I'm sorry, Mr. Mendoza. It is not for sale. They are prepared to pay anything you ask. I'm not asking anything. In that case, Mr. Holland, I must insist that you do not go ahead with the demonstration you are planning this evening. Just who do you represent? I am not at liberty to tell you, but I assure you they are a very powerful group. Then there's nothing more to be said. Good night, sir. Good night. This is James Howland, owner of experimental station ZY3, located at White Plains, New York, televising on a sight channel of three-quarter meters. We are attempting to reach the entire United States direct without the use of relays. Our first presentation this evening will be I Had the Right Idea by Miss Florence, accompanied on the piano by my daughter. Miss June Howland. I had the right idea when I picked this light. The moonlight is perfect. The stars in the sky seem What could I know? I sleep this night, the air feels as though it is filled with the glow. It's all on moment, I'm in a heavenly trance. Your lips entice me, and my arms with nightly around you. I'm heading for bliss, when words in hearing are spoken, when hearing Consummation of a very first year. I have the right idea when I sleep this night to tell you I love you. I think you're divine. Oh, I want you to be 
The few of us who are fortunate enough to have television sets have used them merely as a novelty. When we had nothing else to do, we tuned in on whatever program we were able to pick up. Due to the almost insurmountable obstacles encountered in the frequencies required and high fidelity pictures, our transmissions were limited. But these obstacles, I am happy to say, have been overcome. This in itself was a scientific triumph, but still I was not satisfied. I felt that television should be something more than just another form of amusement. Therefore, I continued my experiment. I'm now going to show you the latest developments which deal with the transmission of television in the quasi-optical region. It is now 1.15 in Paris. Wouldn't you like to see what's taking place in dear old London? London still has its fog. <laughs> the fog in London is a little too much for us. Let us try the other side of the world. There's a spot that's very fascinating. remember the phone call I should have made. Uh, do you mind? Certainly not. Africa is a very interesting place about which we know very little. The natives of Africa years ago were indirectly the cause of... Ah! Uh, oh! Um, civil! Whoa! Oh! Uh, turn on the lights, Perry! Somebody turn on the lights! Turn on them lights! What's the matter? What happened? I don't know. Mr. Howland has probably fainted from overexcitement. <laughs> Oh, Everyone, please remain here. <laughs> it's all right, dear. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nothing, yeah. nothing. Yeah. Hey, there's something happened at the Howland residence. Yeah? Yeah, we're covering it right away. Hello, hello. Kitty Anderson is there. Get me the Howland residence, quick. No, no, no. Me no understand what happened. Hello? What? No, me no can say. Howland is dead, sir. Dead? When did you leave the drawing room? During the televising of China. It seemed to be out of focus. I thought something was wrong in the laboratory. Something was? Is that thing still turned on? No. Who shut it off? I don't know. Did the watchman let you up here? I didn't see him. You sure? Of course. You couldn't be mistaken, could you? I said I didn't see him. It would be better if you didn't. Come, Mother. It looks to me like... Uh, Just a moment. See if you can find that watchman. Now, Doctor, the last thing I want to do is thrust a murder on you, Nelson. But this certainly looks like it to me. You believe that the blow on the head caused his death? 
At the moment, I'd be inclined to say that it did. What's that you have there? Some papers that were on the floor. Is there anything missing? A special cure. Hello, boys. Now, I want a man stationed at each door, and I don't want anybody to leave this house. Fraser, you get, get a couple of boys and go up to the uh, laboratory. Tell the coroner to phone his report to me here. Yes, sir. Oh, Refusing to let any of us go. But how could we be implicated? Well, there's no use worrying about that. It's merely a matter of routine. I hope you're right. Is it proper to infer you come on business connected with homicide? Never mind about that. Tell me what you know about Mendoza. So sorry, but humble servant know nothing about honored gentlemen. You sure of that? Regret. Humbly suggest you squander valuable time. Say, tell me, just how long have you been interested in television? Since student days in China, have honored to be one of 12 students sent all over the world to did, learn from masters. Did Harlow know that? Such matters are not yet presented. Wonderful. Too bad it was out of focus in spots, isn't it? You must be mistaken. The detail was perfect. You're certain? As a matter of fact, I've never seen anything quite so clear. It was a revelation to me. Did you, by any chance, notice anything just after Howland fell? You mean the shadow that flashed on the screen? Yes. Could you tell what it was? It looked to me like the reflection of a person going toward him. Did you see Miss Spencer leave the laboratory? I sure did, with her sweetie. Shortly after that, I started to light me pipe, when somebody snaked up and grabbed me from behind. Oh, I'd like to get my hands on him. Think you could recognize him? Shade for Howland's invention. Who hasn't? Of course, you're interested in it from a business standpoint. Well, I guess you'd call it that, yes. Then why didn't you stay for the entire demonstration? Well, I promised Joan I'd meet her when she's finished. Did you? Certainly. Where? At the laboratory, of course. Did you stop on the way or go direct? Well, uh, no. Uh, that is, uh, when I left the house, I thought I saw someone moving among the trees. Whoever it was got away. I met Joan and she came down. Did you return directly to the house? Well, uh, no. Uh, I. Aren't you getting a little bit personal? Come in. Did you all want to see me, Mr. Chief? Yes. All right, Grayson, I'll want to talk to you a little later. There's nothing to be nervous about, Isabella. That's what you think, sir. But you ain't been listening to Chinese death and just asked the simple since Mr. Howland died. All this excitement am too much for my heart. That's what I want to talk to you about. My heart? No. I didn't have nothing to do with it, honestly, didn't. I'm sure you didn't. But did you see anybody come through the kitchen earlier tonight? I didn't see a soul. Were you there all the time? No, sir, I wasn't. Where well, were you? I was peeping in at the pictures. Well, if anybody went through the kitchen, you'd have seen them, wouldn't you? No, sir, I wouldn't. Why not? I wasn't there all the time. If you weren't in the kitchen and you weren't in the drawing room, for goodness sake, where were you? I was... I was... Uh, where were you? Oh, Mr. Chief, please. All right, run along, Isabella. Is my face red? Come on, let's take a look at the rest of them.
center of attraction. Well, I couldn't swear that any of them was the one. They all look alike to me in that soup and fish get-up. That's all for now, Reardon. Just how long have you been with Howland? I should say, uh, let's see, about seven months. How important a factor is the tube you said was missing from the television set? It's the most vital part of the hookup. Could it be duplicated? I doubt it. Mr. Howland designed it himself. Without his drawings, I'm sure it would be impossible. That's all for now. By the way, Doctor, did you see anything that looked like a figure going across the screen just after Howland collapsed? Sorry. I didn't. I was phoning at the time. Phoning? Yes, I called my office, but no one answered. That makes three people that were out of the room. Of course, uh, you didn't leave the premises. I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong. Neither Perry nor Grayson had anything to do with this. Doctor, I'm sure Howland was murdered right before my eyes. I don't know how or by whom, but to me, everyone's guilty until he proves himself innocent. You shouldn't champion anyone. You know, I'm liable to get the idea that you know who did it. How do I know, Chief, that you didn't? Oh. <laughs> In a cat. Hey, sister, if you stop Jimmy and I'll just slide by. Boss man know I'll leave for us. Boss man say throw him out. Oh, wait a minute. Out oh, you go. go. Wait, you go. Out you go, honey. Out you go, honey. I got business. But I told you I got business here. Him great Charlie Tan say, the matter is settled. Tiny or miss the prize stealing. <laughs> we show Miss Dale. <laughs> Where's Mr. Nelson? Why, uh, I don't know. Would you mind trying to find him? Father's safe has been burglarized. You'd better notify him yourself. Anything new, Nelson? Mother would like to see you at once, Mr. Nelson. Father's room has been broken into. I found it. I would, haven't touched a thing. Would you know if anything has been taken? I'm sure I can help you, Mr. Nelson. I'm familiar with most of Father's things. If they only wanted to rob my husband, why did they have to kill him? It is very evident that someone in this room removed those prints from Mr. Howland's safe. Everyone is more or less under suspicion. And I'm asking that you all submit to a thorough personal search. A matron will be here in a few minutes, and I am sure the ladies will have no objection. I never knew policemen were as nice as Mr. Nelson. <laughs> I suppose the only time you've ever met one was when he yelled, Pull over there, lady. Where do you think you're going, to a fire? Nobody is to leave this house until those papers are found. I'd advise you gentlemen to submit it. Because if you don't, I'll hold every one of you for the next 72 hours. And I assure you, they won't be the most pleasant hours you've ever spent. Well, I have no objection. The 
more I think of it, the more positive I am that this thing rests between two persons. Perry and Grayson? Yes. They both have motives, and they are the only ones that have. They were both out on the grounds when Howland was murdered, but neither can prove where he was. Grayson's ambitious. He's in the television business. He tried to get Howland's invention. He knows it's worth millions. Granted, but everyone here may have reasons also. Or connections with others. And Perry. Who is he and what is he? He's been here about seven months. He lied when he said the broadcast was out of focus. We found him in the laboratory when we discovered the murder. He's the one that says the vital part of the television set is missing. And now the prince is gone. I am going to face both of them under arrest and charge them with murder. Now, don't do anything hastily. You remember when I examined Crowley's brain for you about a year ago? Well, what's that got to do with it? I told you at that time the man was a potential murderer? Yes. Your expert sneered and scoffed. Yet within six months from that time, he was convicted and sentenced to death. Well? If you will permit me to send for my apparatus, I'll prove to you that neither Perry nor Grayson could have committed this murder. Oh, you're talking sheer nonsense. Well, let me telephone my office and have Alan bring it right over. Oh, all right, go ahead. You'll notice the nerve centers are invested by three membranes which lie between them and the bones that form the walls of the cranial cavity and spinal cord. Yes. If part of the skull were resting on the medulla oblongata, it would materially diminish the faculties of perception. Does that uh, indicate a criminal tendency? Undoubtedly. Alan, it won't be necessary for you to go back to the office tonight. Uh, thanks, Doctor. I forgot to mention it before. Uh, there was a call for you over your private wire about eight. Oh, that's all right. It couldn't have been anything of importance. Thanks, Perry. Have I convinced you, Nelson? Well, I don't know. Perhaps you have. Then you agree with me that neither of these men are guilty. In a way, yet I... Uh, yes, I'll agree with you. The only difference in their brain development is the size, and scientifically, that, that has no significance. Pauling, it's touching soda. Glad I happened across you. The inspector wants to see you. He's upstairs. Oh, thanks. Well, I wonder what he wants this time. He wouldn't say. Inspector, you sent for me? Huh? Uh, no. Well, he... Funny. We're getting a little close in here. Yes, it is rather warm. Where are you going? Out for a little air. Sorry. My name is Perry and... Chief Sorters, nobody leaves this house. Names don't mean anything. And I, I don't want to be roughed up like this. I tell you, I wouldn't come in a while. I told you I got business. I keep telling you I got business here. Can't you understand? That guy, I don't know how he gets in, but he's giving us a lot of trouble. Yeah, 
You mugs don't quit rapping on here. I'm going to chase you all out of here. What do you want? My name's Jordan. Keith Nelson sent for me. Okay, that's right. Go ahead. That's right, Coroner. Call me here as soon as you've made an examination. Okay. I'm Jordan. Don Jordan. Of the uh, International uh, Television Corporation? Yes. You seem to be very concerned about Holland's death. I was watching his broadcast. When he collapsed, I telephoned here but couldn't get any information. So I telephoned headquarters. Well? I want to know if he died from natural causes or if he was... Murdered? Yes. And if he was? I think I know who did it. Suppose you tell me he was murdered. Howland had an invention which we were all more or less interested in and... Never mind the preliminaries. Get to the point. Well, it's rather difficult, but I'll try. A certain party came to me. Who was it? A man by the name of... Who? Perry. Go ahead. What else? During our conversation, I made him an offer of a substantial sum if he would use his, uh, 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 that is, his influence with Howland in our behalf. What do you mean by a substantial sum? A hundred thousand dollars. As a bribe? Absolutely not. The money was offered as a gesture of goodwill. If we had someone on the inside, we stood a better chance than the others. We'll see what Perry has to say about this. The man came to my office. You sure? Positive. I wonder who could have done it. It's a mystery to me. That am Arlene's knife. It was stuck away in the corner of the bedroom. This is yours, isn't it? Yes. Knife belonged to me. Then why did you kill Perry? Mr. Perry is very good friend. Chinese do not repay friendship. With death. You're lying. You know you killed him. Charlie can say, sometimes, look frightful liar. Take him to his room and see if he doesn't leave there. Nice to say, he who takes what gods may send has learned life's most important lesson. Listen, listen to the way I come in. I got business in here. Boys, have a heart. I got business here. I got important business here. Well, listen to me, will you? Now, you're out. Now, now stay out. You might not come in this way, but this is the way you're oh, going out. Wait.
No, thank you. Mr. Nelson, I know it sounds perfectly silly, but I just saw Perry. Why? That's impossible. Now, dear, you're naturally upset and nervous. That doesn't alter the fact that I saw him. Uh, don't you think you'd better take something to quiet your nerves? June, where'd you see him? In the upper hallway. Oh, Lord, Lord, I haven't seen a ghost. Oh, I haven't seen a ghost. I know I've seen a ghost. Oh, Lord, Lord, I know I've seen a ghost. I, I know I saw a ghost. Oh, Lord, damn that ghost again. Did that ever come alive? Mr. Mr. Don't let him touch me. Be sensible, Isabella. He's not a ghost. What, what does this mean, Perry? I'm sorry, Chief, that I wasn't able to take you into my confidence before. If you're here and alive, who was it that was killed? My brother. A twin. My head hadn't seen for years until... Stuck away in the corner of the bedroom. This is yours, isn't it? Yes, knife belonged to me. Then why did you kill Perry? Mr. Perry is a very good friend. Chinese do not repay friendship with death. You're lying. You know you killed him. And being at a loss to know how he was mixed up in the affair, I refrained from making his identity known until I was able to make a further investigation. Perhaps I can clear that up for you. This afternoon, your brother represented himself as you to Jordan of the Radio Television Company. Represented himself as me? Yes. And do you know what took place between them? He was offered a substantial sum to secure the drawings of Howland's process. That explains it. Explains what? posing as me, it was very simple for him to gain admittance here and have access to every part of the house. And he must have stolen the print. Yes. Jim Perry, take envelope from cigarette box on table. When was that? Just after you send me after whiskey and soda. Then it must have been your brother who sent me on the wild goose chase after the inspector. When? Just before he was found dead. There were no papers found on the body. Who was in this room when the documents were taken? No one. Just me and you. Door open, but no one come in. What door? That door. Were well, you still in the study at that time, Chief? I believe I was. Anyone with you? Now, let me see. That was just before Jordan came in. Undoubtedly. This is what took place. Thanks. I wonder what he wants now. He wouldn't pay. that correct, doctor? Yes, uh, I did see you, or rather, as you say, your brother take the papers. Earlier tonight, in view of thousands, Mr. Howland was killed by his own invention. His killing was not accidental. It was a deliberately conceived cold-blooded execution, cleverly maneuvered, so as to give the murderer a perfect alibi. Little did Professor Howland realize the surprise he promised you would aid in discovering his murderer. Tonight, a permanent record of everything televised was made on film. Now you're going to see part of that record. Many of you, no doubt, have seen or heard the radio demonstration of starting an automobile motor 
by voice vibration. This is not a difficult thing to do. In this instance, the murderer used sound instead of voice. At exactly 8.29, Dr. Schofield made a telephone call from this house to his office. I will now show you what happened. just saw envelop Professor Howland caused his death. How could such a thing be possible? Dr. Schofield's equipment, which you have just seen, radiated waves direct to Professor Howland's laboratory. When these waves came in contact with those the professor's equipment was radiating, they created interstellar frequency, which is the death ray your contacts with foreign governments interested in television are known. Fantastic. Do you recognize this? May I have that envelope, Doctor? I'm sorry I can't accommodate you. And I object to strong-armed methods. Perhaps you would like to have a look at this. There doesn't seem to be anything in this. Aren't you carrying things with rather a high hand? Not at all. You nearly succeeded in accomplishing the impossible, a perfect murder. But in your eagerness to prove that neither Grayson nor I could have killed Mr. Howland, you telephoned your office forgetting that just previously you had said there was no one there. Now perhaps it, uh, it was another number that I called and uh, didn't care to mention it. Trying to be evasive, Doctor, won't help. Because your assistant let slip that your private phone rang about the same time when Howland was killed. That led me to investigate. When you saw the very thing in another's possession for which you had committed murder, you took a dagger from Arlene's room and followed my brother. You killed him, believing the suspicion the knife was cast on the houseboy would let you get away without any difficulty.
Will you get me a dry martini, Arling? Yes, sir. At once. Two olives. As Ah Ling would say, even though the eyes may see, the mind will not believe. 